You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for October 27th, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from Birthday Central Command, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Happy birthday, Drift Glass. Thank you, darling. Yeah, I, I wrote our intro so that people would wish me happy birthday. That's how. Ah, that's how you vague. totally See, went. I, your your microphone went dead. I can't hear a thing. Really? <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me oh, now? There you are. There you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm being edited. Oh, I have a cat who's rubbing up against the cord oh. and trying to get more attention because I'm not paying enough attention to a certain gato. Yeah. Um, yeah. Happy birthday, no, your class. A, thank you, darling. I appreciate that. I, I wrote the introduction so people would say happy birthday to me. <laughs> Drift class's birthday is October 30th. I have the best memory. I have the best memory, and I have the best (laughs) words, and I'm a smart guy. I went to a school, and I'm very smart. I'm smarter than everybody, so I wrote the thing so people would say they would praise me because I don't get enough praise from people on my birthday. Yes, there you go. And, um, yeah, right. That that is uh, paraphrasing our president. That was this week. Not our president, but a so-called president. Uh, yeah, he ha- he is very smart. You know, very it's, smart. it's it's definitely Fredo behavior. Um, one of the great memories. One yeah, the and I, great you know, of you know, uh, you know what makes a perfect birthday gift for a class? A pair of Dukakis what? khakis. Sense oh, really? Do they make them in my size? No. <laughs> no, they don't. No, nothing comes in my size. Dukakis but, is a short man, Drift Glass. Yeah. You can get me the, the you can get me the Dukakis khaki shorts. Shorts Those. that are that would be pants yeah. on Mike Dukakis. Right. They're shorts on you. Yes. They're, they're seasonably sensible. They are seasonably sensible. Sensible pants for senseless times when Donald Trump walks out in that stupid too big suit with the pointing at his private's red tie. Look at my dick. Your remote to the off position and sit back in Dukakis khakis. Mike Dukakis didn't belong in a tank, but he was sensible, and so are you. In yes, your indeed. Dukakis khakis. Put your feet up. But you know what you never do when you put your feet up, Blue Girl? Never, ever, ever. You never look down at your feet and see a pair of Crocs. I know that. Never. No. Never. Hey, hey, man, don't wear those shoes. Get your Croc blockers. And hey, man, don't wear those shoes. And that's our uh, fake advertisers for the week. Uh, advertorials. They're advertorials. paid for by our fake advertising <laughs> to make it sound editorial <laughs> With fake money. <laughs> With fake money. With e-coin. <laughs> E-coin. Oh, we're all, all we're accepting now is E-coin. So. E-coin from, from yeah. Evil Corp, right. Yes. Now, we just got a little uh, doc, uh, Mr. Robot reference in there. We've yes, also we been enjoying or and finished last night at 1 in the morning. Yes. Because you, you can't stop watching it. No. Mind Hunter. Yes. Highly recommended if you uh, don't mind uh, a little bit of violence in your show. I mean, the, yeah. these shows are violent. I'm, I'll just say there's violence in them. Uh, especially, I think, the shock at the beginning. Everyone talks about that in reviews, and I'm not going to say what it is at all. No. Uh, there's shocking violence in the show, and uh, it's bad. And it's true. Mm-hmm. And it's a and true that's... story. Oh, by the way, it's a true story. Yes, that's, okay. That's the thing. True yeah, crime. It, this is, this is yeah. as we're referred to it around our house, True Detective 3.0. It's um, what True Detective, the second season of True Detective, should have been. Absolutely, absolutely should, should yeah. have been. Yeah. So uh, we uh, got through that and uh, are enjoying Mr. Robot, and we're not going to talk any more about it because we're not nope. going to do spoilers or nothing. So nope. hopefully you guys are watching. And um, I will compliment uh, USA Network on their social media strategy yeah, because I noticed uh, on Twitter, and I've, I've been watching this, uh, we mentioned that uh, the Mr. Robot people, I, I'm on their mailing list, right? <laughs> and so they've sent me, uh, they sent me for the premiere, the season premiere of Mr. Robot, uh, one of the masks from uh, Mr. Robot. People wear ma- a specific kind of mask. And uh, they sent one to me, um, and they sent one to lots of people. I went and looked at the people who um, had tweeted on the day of the show they're themselves in their mask because that's what we were asked to do is do a selfie and put this mask up and 
it was uh, a lot of people who are who have not a lot of followers. Um, right. I didn't see anyone who had more followers than I have on Twitter, and I thought that's really weird. Why is he? Why are they giving attention and content? Uh, request to people who don't have a lot of followers. And um, I forgot that there's this thing called Instagram that all the kids are doing. And yes, these people yes. have Twitter accounts, but they have Instagram accounts. And yeah. so I'm not a big Instagrammer, but I'm on Twitter and doing Photoshops of Mr. Robot every once in a while. And uh -huh. so they caught me at that. Uh, it is clear to me that the Mr. Robot people are looking for uh, what Brandeis University looked for in their admissions when I went to Brandeis, which is the inner motivated self-starter. People yes. who started a podcast, people who started a webzine, people uh -huh. who started a chat room on pop culture TV. And they know that even if that person is has 200 followers, mm -hmm. Those kind of creative types are the ones who at some point might take off and you want to be on their good side and it doesn't yeah. cost you anything yeah. to send them a mask by UPS. I mean, that is such a good investment and very, very smart to take, go after the Elliot's basically, you know, the you people know who are it reminds edgy me a little bit, and a little bit off. Reminds me a little <laughs> bit of, of, of Star Trek. Mm-hmm. In that they didn't realize what they had yeah. until the show had been canceled. Right. They, right. We only have X number of viewers. Yeah, but those viewers are like they work at NASA. Right. They're, they're influencers. They're right. people who talk to other people. They're the people you really, really want moving and you know, talking about your show because it's a show. But uh, this is giving nothing away to say that uh, Mr. Robot wears its politics on its sleeve. Absolutely. It does. This year – is definitely uh, about being anti-Trump. That's all yeah. over the media. And uh, it is, it, uh, at the very first episode of the very first season, Elliot said, I don't give a shit about money. Yeah. And it's very clear that Sam Esmail, the writer of this and creator of the yeah. show, is saying, I don't give a shit about Trump voters no. and, and their market share. Go yeah. fuck yourselves, you know? This was, this was supposed to be a, like a two-hour, three-hour movie. Yeah. And I told them it was too long, so could you make it a series? It's now in its third year. So yeah. at this point, it's like, you know what? I'm doing what I do. Yeah, and well, and, like and it, that's, that's the difference, though, Driftglass, between Star Trek, which yeah. was created at a time when there were three networks and you had to get eyeballs yep. to, to win, and now you can be a niche market thing and mm -hmm. be a big success because... People are watching it on their phones or on their tablets or when, you know, I, I'm amazed junior dude in college was such a addict of Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And yeah. especially um, Alec Baldwin's impersonations of Trump's always wanted to see the cold open right when it came out, wanted to be uh -huh. there for it, wanted to wait up for it. Sat sat watching for the TV to go on, and now that he's in college, he's like, oh, I'll watch it tomorrow. <laughs> I'll yeah. Watch it on my yeah. phone, and and because he's just so busy. He's and and you know the man the man's busy on a Saturday night. You know man's what I'm busy saying? Busy on Saturday night. <laughs> you know you know what you know what this whole uh, uh, self starter individually motivated yeah. niche market thing reminds me of what the professional left podcast with their class and blue People. Professional podcast people. I'm all. <laughs> I'm on my second beer, and it's only eleven o'clock. <laughs> no, that's not not true. Uh, but I, I would like to segue from all of our, um, yeah, uh, all of the well wishing, pop culture, and all of the and stuff coming yeah. to me about yeah. me being me and me being <laughs> awesome, and uh, move on to sexual harassment, which yeah. is a topic very much now, in the news. Now known as halpering. Yeah, to halpern someone now, is. Let, to, let me just tell a little story here. Tell a little story. Uh, I'm sitting at my laptop, the, the laptop that's in the living room. We have laptops kind of used laptops scattered around the house. Let me put it that way. And we have a good dealer who uh, sells used laptops and repairs them right down the street in yep. a hole in the wall store. Mm -hmm. uh, so we always buy used well, it's laptops. Mr. Robot, frankly. Yeah, yeah and he, he is kind of Mr. Robot. It really kind of is. His store looks like Mr. the Mr. Robot store. Absolutely. Um and so I'm at the living room laptop, which is where I sit to podcast, by the way. And you walk out and you, the first thing you said to me was, this isn't funny. This is yeah. not a joke. I need to tell you something. This isn't funny. Right. And then you said, Mark Halperin is being accused by five women of sexual harassment. 
And I went, is that a joke? <laughs> are you kidding? What are you saying? Why are you saying that's not funny? Mark Halpern's a sexual harasser. Why are you putting it that way? Why would you and, say that's not funny when that's obviously hilarious? When that's obviously funny. That can't yeah. possibly be true because he's not that guy. He's, yeah. And they should just go go to Twitter. <laughs> yeah. And I did. I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. Uh, and I want to just back up, up for a minute because there is so much wrong with Mark Halperin anyway. Right. It's a, it's a uh, long he list. He never belonged it's a on very television long list. being no. what he was. So nope. the fact never that there. he had a stage in his life of being ABC News director and treating women in the workplace uh, completely inappropriately, in, in yep. fact, engaged in what I'm, I and most people I think would consider an assault. Yes. Um, repeatedly. Repeatedly. Right. Uh, and with with uh, a, a way of doing it that was clearly a pattern. And uh, I just want to back away from that for a moment. All right. I feel as though with all all this coming out, because now naming names is the thing this week, particularly. Right. Uh, right. There are editors and photographers and uh, personalities all over Hollywood and Washington and journalism and so forth, where women in particular, uh -huh. uh, but some men as well, are coming out and naming names and saying, and it and it it isn't a situation where there was a lawsuit or a settlement or a um, non disclosure agreement. It just right. it happened a while ago. I mean, uh, the Halpern stuff was from the aughts. It was t over ten years ago. He was uh -huh. in this position. Um, but I feel like this is spotlight almost yes, in terms yes. of spotlight, by the way, being if, if you're not aware, spotlight being the movie about the Catholic Church. Yes. And this yes. group of reporters discovering uh, to their horror that uh, priests abusing children isn't just they found three, three of them or they found that wasn't one a of them. one off. It wasn't a yeah. thing that happened it once was in a while. And it was, no. a, it was Everywhere. It was Endemic. throughout the church. It was covered yep. up everywhere, and it was covered yep. up constantly. By the highest authorities. By the yep. highest authorities, and and multiple priests were moved around. And then there's a scene where they're on the phone with this uh, guy who has been studying this sort of thing and saying, well, we kind of know that one out of four <laughs> priests yep. are probably doing this. You know, now something the that math. We're, we're doing the math on this and figuring that this happens hundreds of times. In in parish after parish after parish. Yes. And sexual harassment in the workplace is yep. is now becoming that. It's, it's like, wow, this is fucking everywhere. Yes, it, it is. is. And it absolutely and, is. And, and it absolutely is. And there isn't a workplace that's exempt. And what I hope is happening is we are now having a change in the culture mm -hmm. where the workplace is a place of safety for women. And a place of equality for women. Mm -hmm. And I am, at the more I've been thinking about it, and, and you know, if you want to talk about Bill O'Reilly and his $32 million settlement for, against, you know, for one, a person, one, one person, person. Mm -hmm. uh, $32 million to one person. Uh -huh. What did he do? Yep. <laughs> I don't, I'm, I, I'm sure... I don't want to know, you know, right. I really don't want to know because I it, respect the person who took that settlement right. um, and what they must have gone through. Uh, but to me, and I, and I want to be careful how I word this. Uh, I, I see this as the entirely justified revenge of the Clinton voter. Yes. And what I mean by that is, and, and, and bear with me because I am not suggesting that uh, because Hillary Clinton lost the election, therefore we're all coming out and no. smacking around the men that we work with who did bad things. That's not right. what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is, <clears throat> excuse me, we had a situation where women had an expectation that we were going to get the, that there was going to be a woman president. Yes, and that that through her and via that avenue. We were going to see an improvement of women's conditions, not only in this country, but around the globe, because right. representation matters. It does. And what we got instead was Donald Trump. Right. And that happened as a result of a whole lot of things, uh -huh. uh, including it looks very much like Russian collusion. <laughs> Uh -huh. But when you look at the pattern of what stopped Hillary Clinton from being president 
of the United States. It is older white male abusers. Yes. It's uh, Putin, Trump, Assange, uh, <laughs> the director O'Reilly. of O'Reilly, O'Reilly. Uh, the, whole, Mark Halperin. the whole Fox News cabal. Mark Halpern was a misogynist asshole during this election. Absolutely. Well, you know, yeah. what Trump did wasn't illegal. So right. we can't right. re- yeah. we can't really argue that this disqualifies him from being no. president. It doesn't. And and enabling Trump uh, over and over and over again to the point where, uh, you know, he's called out by Brian Williams one night of, you know, to a fault, Mark Halpern, you are really in Trump's corner. And then and the next morning. Ballistic? Yep. The yep. next morning, who goes ballistic but Joe Scarborough? How dare you? How dare anyone question that Mark Halpern just suggesting that Donald Trump could win is somehow siding with Trump? That's And, and he went really violent about it in his language and his, his yelling as he does. So Joe Scarborough just was livid and, and protecting his little pet, Mark Halpern, uh, from, from Brian Williams calling him out. So there is this whole... Uh, zeitgeist of male power stopping Hillary Clinton from being president. Right. And I feel that the zeitgeist would have gone along as President Clinton made life better for women here in the United States and across the globe, that that would have been our focus. Yeah. That can't be our focus. Our focus is now protecting our health insurance, protecting our rights to reproductive autonomy. We have to we have to fight this shit now. We, we and the war we were gonna, on women yeah. it has gone nuclear. We thought we were going to refine and advance right. exactly. gains that half measures, mm-hmm. quarter measures, and we were, um, we would we would tolerate what we had to tolerate to get there because there was someone in our corner where we could work onward and upward. And there would be uh, we would endure mm-hmm. uh, like like. Like we always have, just a complete shit storm from the right of right. witch hunts mm-hmm. and freakouts and mm-hmm. more hearings and more hearings and mm-hmm. why aren't you impeaching her? Why aren't you impeaching her now? Because yeah. that's who those people are. Yeah. And what's hilarious uh, is they're still doing that. Right. <laughs> even though all, she lost, all they know even though do. she says she's never going to run again, they're still impeaching Hillary. I mean, Sebastian Gorka last night called for her execution. Yeah, but he's just a fringe. Oh, wait a minute. He worked in the White House. Yeah. yeah. Until until the the Secret Service said, ah, uh, no, we can't no. give a security clearance to this Nazi, no. right? No. no Nazis. Sorry. We have a pretty strict <laughs> no Nazi policy. <laughs> okay. So so when, I want to be clear. I'm I when I say entirely justified revenge of the Clinton voter, I'm not suggesting this is revenge. We're going to get you. No. I'm suggesting you put us on a different road which is war footing. We were planning on, you know, Cold War and detente, and let's right. work on peace negotiations to get us where we want to go. Yeah. Uh, and and we will be the, the UN peacekeeping forces who are going to feed people and move on and get people health care and do autism uh, training and all of the good things that Hillary Clinton was going to do. Uh-huh. And you uprooted us from that road and put us on a road where you are bombing us on a daily basis. Right. Fine. You're taking kids' health, health insurance care away. away. From You're ignoring children's health insurance, the insurance of 9 million children, including ours. You're shredding uh, the education system. You're shredding the housing system. You're shredding the uh, EPA. You're putting the, the – you're literally if – you, if this were just a cartoon – Let's find the very worst people to fuck everything up and put them in charge of the thing that they should never be allowed to touch. Right. That has been – every one of those has been approved by the Republican Congress, mm-hmm. has been voted for by the Republican Congress, has been thumbs up by you know these, these sudden late, late blooming people who have a conscience now because they're perfectly OK with all this shit. They just wish Donald Trump weren't such a public embarrassment. Right. And if, and if he, he just, would delete, if he would delete his Twitter account, right. they would be 100 percent behind him Jeff, all of the time. Jeff Flake would be fine, he, but right. you know, it's it's Grandpa's walking around with his dick out again. Right. Well, Grandpa's got a million other problems, but uh, so may, basically, if he closes his robe up and stops informing people what conservatism is really like, that it really is ignorance and bigotry and hate and paranoia and misogyny. If he would just shut the fuck up about that and implement those things. In a policy setting, you're totally okay with that right. because that really is what conservatism is, and so, that's so. Yeah. Th- this is the fight uh, that 
this is the fight we've been given. Mm -hmm. And so all of the shit that we put up with for 30 years uh, is now game. Yeah. And uh, that that's where we're at. Well, may I, may I add one thing to that? Uh-huh. As a member of the patriarchy, may I? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, uh, the title, the working title for this week was the the lessons from the Shawshank Redemption, mm -hmm. which I think applies here. So, okay. do you mind if I insert them here? Go right ahead. Um, because during the week we sort of joke around, what are we going to call this week? What's going on this week? And things just are in flux all the time. But this one I think really does apply to um, the the massive um, psychological and cultural backlash that's coming from people who thought they would be able to work on moving the country forward. Now they're trying to save it from complete disaster. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, lessons from the Shawshank Redemption. Accept the reality of your situation. It doesn't matter that you're innocent. You're still in fucking prison. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. there. You're there. It's real. The walls are real. The, the bars are real. The warden is a lunatic. The, you're, the people around you are sadists. Accept it. Don't capitulate to it, but accept that it really happened and it's really going on, and it doesn't matter that it's completely fucking unfair because nobody cares about fair. Mm -hmm. Second, yep. within the limits of your confinement, try to make things better for yourself and those around you. Mm -hmm. yep. Find get, your friends. Get beer Find, on the roof, right? Yep. Get yep. your friends. Get your allies. There's there's ways to make friends even in the worst conditions. Find your friends. Find your allies um, and, and make things better for them. And the third, and most importantly – Never stop working on your escape plan. <laughs> yep. Never, ever yep. stop digging that tunnel out of prison to freedom. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, yes, you're in jail. Yes, it sucks. Yes, it's awful. But the object of the exercise, this is what I never understand about people who say, well, it's not just enough to be against Trump. You have to. No, no, it is. It <laughs> yes, is. it is. It yes, it is. You know what? Right now, it goddamn is. That's right. We could. We can worry about uh, dividing up Europe after the Nazis are defeated. Yep. Now yep. we have to worry about fucking Nazis in the White House. Yep. And if it's not enough for you, if, you're, if your answer is, yeah, they're Nazis, but, you know, I don't hear a practical universal health care plan from the Democrats. So I'm really kind of on the fence about this. Then you're listening to someone who's either four years old or uh, insane or a Russian bot or a, a, an independent. Mm -hmm. who's actually a Republican, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the sound you're hearing in the background is the sawing and milling of all the boards for all the lifeboats that are going to be put in the water uh, and are being put in the water because they're going to run like hell away from Donald Trump when Donald Trump, because this can't be sustained. Right. There's no way to, I mean, I, uh, this is, it is amazing to me that nobody in the news media read 1984. <laughs> <laughs> and that nobody in the news media, because they're like, well, this this just can't, you just can't have a party based on, you know, division and hate. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. You absolutely mm -hmm. can. The whole mm -hmm. the whole object of the exercise in 1984 was the object of power is power. Yep. Of course we can build a party on hate and paranoia, but it'll burn you out. Who cares? It doesn't matter. The, the, we don't care about any policies. We care about achieving power, holding on power for the purpose of exercising power. That's it. Yep. And that's what's going on inside the Republican Party right now. Now – it's not sustainable because the rest of the world is not the world of 1984. It simply won't mm -hmm. tolerate uh, a country, even though it's the United States, being this way, being this diseased, freaked out, right-wing, theocratic shithole. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so you factor in what liberals are going to do and the Democratic Party is going to do and our allies are going to do in the next election and the election after that. The day is coming, and you can see it all around you, when the people who enable this bullshit are, are building their boats – this is all Trump. This is not a pre-existing condition of the right. Republican Party. Right. This was around for the last 25 years. We didn't ignore it. It's not on us. It's not on us. And the my, mark my word, this is where Mark Halpern comes in. Mm -hmm. Because is Mark Halpern going to be forgiven in one full Halpern, which is the unit of measure we use to determine and, and what... This is, this is been, we have had this measure since Mark Halpern was suspended for saying Barack Obama is kind of a dick. And that was what, 2009? 2013. 13. Thank 13. you. Thank you. Okay. 12 or 13, I think. But yeah, and, and, and it pre existed that because before that it was called, it was the Gingrich rules. Right. You know, right. no matter how horrific Newt Gingrich behaves, no matter how racist and awful he is, no matter how many lies he tells on the outside world, um, once he crosses a line, whatever the line is this week, he'll be put in the penalty box for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And then Charlie Rose or, or George Stephanopoulos or usually, um, but David Gregory would have him back on the air, 
never mentioned the horrid shit he did, rehabilitate his image and send him back into the world, you know, fresh and, and pure as, as, a, as, as the driven snow to do exactly the same shit again. So there was some deal that was made behind closed doors between those people that we will always rehabilitate Newt Gingrich uh, because he knows where the hookers are buried or whatever. Or something, yes. Mark Halpern has the same deal. Now, whether or not the network's pockets are deep enough to buy him out of it is the question. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. people who run NBC, Phil Griffin and Andy Lack and the assholes who put him on the air in the first place, let him get away with lying constantly, let him be this this bowsiderous zombie, let him go on the Glenn fucking Beck show and, and, yep. and agree with him about the liberal media bias and then come right back on the air and never mention it. All the people who defend him, even though he's clearly a, another one of those of cyborg sent from the future to destroy America. <laughs> Even, and no matter what he does, it's 30 days suspension and then he's back in, in their good graces. Well, and the, we're going to have to also wait and see how the female employees at the places where he would be invited back ordinarily by the boys club. Yes. React to that. Yes. Uh, and that, I, that's when we find out if this is truly a cultural change mm -hmm. or just a matter of adding a few zeros to the payout. Right. Um, and which right. case it's factored into you know, next. Well, next and, and the fact that it was over 10 years ago and it was at another network, not the network he's at right now. Mm -hmm. And he's gotten married and had a kid since then and on and on and on. The, you know, there's all these kind of distancing things from his behavior uh, that that all factors into whether the boys club is going to be allowed to make that excuse or not to themselves. I don't think I think we are at a at a pivot in our culture uh, at, for the reasons that I said before, because we, meaning women, have been put on a road where we're at war and we mm -hmm. are at war defending our rights, defending right. our families. And so it's not just it's not a question of. Uh, sort of uh, gregarious me tooism of you know you're you're allowed back on because we understand no we're done with that right. we can't allow traitors like you to be on the air and we're going to this is this is the this is the weapon we've been given right to take back our country and we're going to do is, it this is the and, very... and, and, and let's add to this mm -hmm. that the I I know I don't need to say this to our listeners <laughs> <laughs> yes. When you elect a serial sexual harasser to and the presidency yes. of the United States yes. and look the other way constantly because of ratings right. at what he was and who he was for ratings, that's the end. Yeah. We're woke now. Well, we are alert to you. And when you point your cameras at mobs, mm -hmm. at, at rallies, yeah. that who, you know, husband and wife with their matching fuck your feelings t-shirt. Right, right. Uh, because Obama divided this country. Right. Uh, no, we're at war. Yeah. We're at war with those people. And yeah. those people currently are winning. They're not going to win, but they are currently... They are currently winning, and we're losing a lot. And we're yeah. losing a lot of funding, and we're losing a lot of sleepless, you know, a lot of sleep we're losing. Yeah. Uh, it's it's bad, and it's bad for us, and we're going to... I like, I like the Shawshank thing of... Don't deny that this is horrible. No, it's horrible. Uh, and and you're go I'm going to weep tears once a week, you know, at least over what's going on. But uh, also don't stop digging and don't stop planning for the exit to this because there's going to be an exit. And support exit those who are willing to go that mile with you. Yes. And, and hopefully the, the, your exit will involve taking down the corrupt monsters who made this possible in the first yep. place. Yep. Um, um, last night on All In, uh, we yes. are recording on Friday. Last night on All In, uh, a man named Renato Mariotti was on talking yes. to Joy Reid about Fox News and how there is this uh, feedback loop where Fox News reports on a conspiracy theory like Hillary Clinton gave all our uranium to Russia. <laughs> You know, I mean, or that's... Hillary Clinton murdered Vince Foster. That's how Mur far back well, it goes. Well, you know, the latest one is he he she gave our new she gave nuclear capacity to Russia was what what right. Gorka said last night. Right. Okay, on Fox several right. times on right. several different shows. This is what he's saying. Okay, yeah. so there's this Fox report on this. Then jackasses like Devin Nunes say we need an investigation based here. on this news quote unquote news report. Yeah. We need to investigate Hillary Clinton and her Russia connection. Right. Then 
Fox News reports on the investigation as a right. news story. <laughs> and then we're off to the races. And we're off to the races. It's called Whitewater. And yeah, and and this man, uh, Mariotti, uh, uh, said, you know, I have people in my family that watch Fox News and they are in a different reality. And Joy and Reed said, I call it Earth 2. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it is. It's just this separate world where nothing that is true is believed and everything that is not true is accepted. Well, and, and we had a little little intersection. I, I'll talk about that in a minute. The, the I, I want to talk about, I want to finish up my thought yeah. about Renato Mariotti because, and I'm not endorsing him, nope. uh, but he is running for attorney general of Illinois. Uh-huh. Um, I, I'm going to look at all of the candidates before I decide who to vote for it for uh, attorney general. Mm -hmm. um, the One has to be cautious about electing former federal prosecutors to office. Because, <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> and I'm just saying that as an, a card carrying ACLU member. Yeah, Cause um, they like, they like, they like to prosecute. Yeah. yeah. They like to prosecute. Okay. So, but his tweets um, from last night, uh, because Joy Reid allowed him to mention that he was running. Uh, and you said he was well connected in Chicago. His dad's a, a Walmart cashier. I no so. no no. I did not say that. Oh okay. I I'm said sorry. I did not know that there's a there is a family, the Mariotti family in uh -huh. Chicago. Oh I see. And he may or may not be related to okay. that. Okay. Okay. So this is how fake news gets started. This is how right, we lose our credibility. Right. This, yes, right. We start losing our credibility. Yeah. Anyway, he is uh, a former federal prosecutor, and uh, so he does have that going for him uh but he his twitter stream last night about running and why he was running he did a thread and i just want to read a couple of these tweets to you uh because this is how you run as a goddamn democrat right <laughs> now <laughs> yeah read, okay read we're gonna read tweets now so we're just just a couple yeah that's fine uh when i left my job as a federal prosecutor last june i didn't expect to spend every spare minute talking about our president before november i couldn't Im oh, i'm sorry before November, I couldn't imagine a president who would attack everything we care about, our rights, our values, our Constitution. Mm -hmm. One thing I've always told you is that you shouldn't sit back and wait for someone like Mueller to save this country for you. Yes. We have to get off our butts and save it ourselves. That's why I'm running for attorney general of Illinois. Our state's attorney general are the last line of defense against the Trump administration. When I'm attorney general... I plan to do everything I can to stop Trump yeah. from taking away our rights and misusing his power. The legal system is our best hope to keep him in check and fight back against him. I plan to investigate what the Russians did to penetrate our voting systems in Illinois. I will find out what happened and I'll make sure it never can happen again. Uh, and so he and then his last tweet was, I'm going to need your help to take on Trump. I know we can do it. He is not being shy about who he's running against. Right. Every Democrat that runs needs to run against Trump. Yes. That plain right. and simple. Uh -huh. uh, and and that works. I mean, that that gets you in the door. Uh, now, you were going to say something. <laughs> I, I, I forget now. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Go back to our notes, Drift Glass. I, I'm on notes. Our, I'm on our notes. I, our notes. We, we are so far off the, <laughs> off the beyond the margin of the page now. We're just this is just jazz, baby. We're just riffing on stuff that we see in front of it. And you know what? Uh, it's it's quite valid. Oh, I was gonna say, um, there is a local example mm -hmm. of what happens when fake news, uh, republicanism, oh, and sort of generalized sense of fear and timidity. Mm -hmm. infects your mm -hmm. politics. Mm -hmm. uh, we had in, in uh, the city of Springfield uh, something called a Welcome City Resolution. And the Welcome City Resolution uh, was a very simple uh, piece of prose that said, refugees and immigrants are welcome here. That's all it was. It was not a, uh, it was not a, it was not a uh, piece of legislation. It had no force of law. It was it, not amnesty. It no. was not sanctuary city. Didn't mention any of those things. No. It, it, nope. and, and again, it has no effect. It just says, yeah. hey, immigrants, you have a long history of being a, a place that welcomes immigrants and refugees. They're vital to our economy, yada, yada, yada. Um, and it failed at it the, failed city, the city council. Vote. City council yep. By a lot. It was, it, well, it was tabled, but in, you know, parliament, in parliamentary speak, under those circumstances, you table something, you almost certainly kill it because it requires a supermajority to be reenacted and blah, 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 blah. So the idea was we don't want to talk about this. And mm -hmm. and the people who, who 
came out against it, had every fucking excuse in the book. It's redundant. We've done this before. I, and, but, the, but the worst one was I talked to someone in the congressional delegation, in our congressional, and he told me that this might affect our funding because it, it, it's like they might think this is a sanctuary city thing. And then all of our funding for roads and railroads and everything will be cut off. And even, even if there's a slim 1% chance that might actually be true, we have to be careful of it. And so I'm not going to vote for this, which is all bullshit. All bullshit. All bullshit. And either he's lying, which I, I have no idea, or he is so simple-minded that he will accept uh, a bullshit lie from uh, Rodney Davis's office or some other yep. Republican's yep. office. Um, that is also not true. So are you yep. just ignorant or are you are you maliciously making shit up? Well, and he's uh, saying that in a city council meeting. Right. Where if you stand up and say, name the congressman, I want to talk to them, I think that's right. baloney, and, and right. you say it, you don't swear, you just say, you know, right. what you're saying is, is categorically false, then you've, you've lost because you're now having an argument about what someone who isn't there said, and you have to table it because well, you, you know, have to get to the bottom of whatever this issue is well right? here, but here, here's the thing i would have stood up and said so your objection is based on an interpretation of a law that isn't really a law it's a resolution i mean just because we had a national pancake day resolution at the city council doesn't actually mandate everyone must eat pancakes on february 22nd or whatever the fuck mm -hmm. um you understand how resolutions work they're like proclamations we think our sports team is the best we have the greenest lawns in america they don't mean anything but if you really think that's true and that's your objection, then can I count on your vote, he said to the alderman in front of an entire audience of people, once I prove to you that this is not really true. Mm -hmm. Make him go on the record to say, yeah, my only objection is this dumbass opinion of mine. And if you debunk it, I'll change my mind. Yeah. Boom. That's how you, that's how you do. That's how you do in politics. Uh, but the, the point being, these elected officials and the people who stood up and opposed this resolution were mm -hmm. full of Trump vocabulary. Yeah. Oh, full yeah. Of fear. You know, full well, of Fox you vocabulary this, as the well. criminals yeah. will come in. And the criminals, I mean, I'm, I'm for uh, immigrants, but not, you know, not, I'm only for le the, the legal ones. I'm for this legal is, immigration. This is yeah, going to invite right, criminals right. and drug dealers and God knows who all else. Yeah. And, and, you know, cats and dogs living together. And you could just see in this little group of people, in this little community, how toxic the groundwater has become mm -hmm. specifically because of Fox News and hate radio and Republican politics going back 25 years. That's the poison that they have infested every fucking community practically um, in, in the center of this country. Yeah, but I want to play devil's advocate with you, Drew Glass, and I know I already did this once with you off, off the air, but uh, I would argue also, in addition to everything you've said, that – uh, the people behind the welcoming cities uh, resolution uh -huh. would have absolutely no problem with Springfield becoming a sanctuary city. I think you're right. And I'm for that yep. <laughs> as well. Yep. Uh, and suing the pants off any federal agency that tried to cut off funding based on that. Yep. Uh, join with, you know, the the apparently Renato Mariotti types around the country who are yep. suing. Mm -hmm. to say, no, you don't get to do this. And, and the people, the, the courts have turned down the Muslim ban over and over and over and over again. Uh -huh. he, Trump keeps losing on that. Uh, and, and I do think Mariotti is right, which is, look, this is going to go Mueller. I'm glad Mueller's doing what he's doing, <laughs> but don't depend on him to save you. What's going to save us is lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit to I agree. stop this agenda. I agree. And so, uh, yeah, if if um, if we're if we're honest with ourselves, no, let's not do that. <laughs> uh, getting some sort of feel good half measure before the Springfield City Council, maybe that uh -huh. having lost that now, I can say this. Maybe uh -huh. that's not where our energy needs to go. Well, I'm not going to disagree with you, especially since mm -hmm. you're playing devil's advocate and you promised you'd wear the costume <laughs> later. And that's awesome. But that's neither I don't know here what nor you're there. talking about. I, that's neither here nor there. Um, uh, here's my point. My point is, um, you know, I was there. I talked to some the people. I listened to the, the, the good folks who, who were behind this resolution, who were deeply disappointed. 
um, I took note of their um, uh, objections and, and their frustrations, and I shared them. Uh, but they kept making sort of legal-based arguments. Don't they realize that blah, blah, blah? Don't they understand that the legal term um, – um, Sanctuary doesn't mean anything, and illegal doesn't mean anything. It's and, and the proper legal term is – they were talking quite correctly, nothing I disagree with. They were talking in a in – a, they're, they're on Earth 1. The yeah, people right. they're trying to convince are on Earth 2. No, that's it. Yep. And, and yep. you are never, ever going to convince them that even this toothless little resolution is worth voting for because – Behind every excuse, there's another excuse until you drill down, until you sit with them and drill down far enough. And I just don't like those people. Mm -hmm. And I don't mm -hmm. like them because Sean Hannity thinks I shouldn't like them. And Sean Hannity is a good Christian man. Once you drill through all the bullshit, you find this is all just it's all just nonsense. It's just it's all just excuses. It's all it's all blah, blah, blah until you get to the meat of it. And the meat of it is I've been trained to hate those people. And there's no way on God's fucking earth I'm going to give them anything. And, and the evidence they always point to will always be some iteration of Fox News. And in our local newspaper, here in this here in a little town in the state of Illinois capital, Ann Coulter has a column, a yep. syndicated column, because, you know, we, we really need both sides represented in the media. Well, what fucking side is we Ann Coulter? We should just be listening to each other. Right. Yeah, and, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confess, Drift Class, I didn't only think the C word this week when I read Ann no. Coulter's column. I said it out. I said we should rename the podcast and culture is a c word and i said i let's go for that you're the devil's advocate you know this shit let's go let's I, do i was ready i was ready because her, the first sentence of her column was about liberals engage liberals enabling sexual harassment right it's it's a, it's on us for some reason it's always because it's always on us we do everything horribly horribly wrong the, so, yeah. the, the point being that it's not just the ann coulter's who are the problem. It's all the timid, cowardly little people out there making little decisions at the local well, level who yep, are so it, afraid of yep. pissing off the end of the percent yep, that yep. they won't do anything. Well, because, and that's what really upset me was I know some of the people who sit on the board of that newspaper. Yes, you do too. Yes. And I know that that paper is there to sell grocery store ads yep. and it's the, and uh, pharmacy ads. Yep. And in between, we have a lot of AP syndication stories to get your national news. And to be fair, we most... also have we also have some pretty decent reporting, local reporting, local but... reporting of local and state government. We have some good reporters, uh, but we also have um, the most watered down version of headlines. Uh, because I'll go and look. That's the one thing that the paper is given, you know, leeway over. You get to write the headline for the story. Right. And I go and look on the AP website, and the headline is State Department Scraps Sanctions Office. Yeah. <laughs> which they did. Uh -huh. Rex Tillerson's State Department just decided we don't need to coordinate sanctions against the Russians anymore. Right. Because we're already three weeks late, right? right? So just don't turn in that paper. Right. So Fuck we're it. not, I guess we're not doing sanctions on Russia anymore. I'm getting a C anyway, no matter it what. Was, I it was. It was voted on unanimously by the Senate yes. uh, that we, we need to do this, that sanctions need to go ahead. And and Trump's White House has just decided no. But in the meantime, it was Hillary that did the whole thing. Right. You know, on Fox 24-7, it's now Hillary is the Russian puppet, right? And this is why. But I want to get just please, get back please, to the local paper. Please do. The headline in our local paper for that story would be something to the effect of uh, Russian sanctions unsure after blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to you don't want to piss anybody off. You don't want to shock them out yeah. of. They're sitting in McGill's. They're eating their pudding, and you don't want to freak them out and you know give yeah. them a, a cardiac arrest or or make them think that you're anti-Trump because right. you know God forbid they'll storm they'll set fire to the office building right. And that's this is why I will this is why I believe David Brooks is the worst person in the world, and I use him as a proxy <laughs> for everyone else who, who behaves like him, including Mark Halperin. And a bunch of other people I mentioned, you know, ad nauseum on this podcast, because the reaction to Ann Coulter in the newspaper should be revulsion. Mm -hmm. And it is by anybody who reads the English language and understands what words mean on a page and understands who the fuck she is and what she says every day, all the time. And there's, there should be no place for her in polite company, in journalism, et cetera. 
and there are people who 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 suck up to like that, who believe everything she says, who believe Hillary Clinton murdered Vince Foster, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's all these putting soft people in the middle who just don't want to offend anyone. I don't want I don't I don't want I don't like all the fighting. So let's just we'll have both of them in there. And then it'll be okay because both sides, you know, there's, I'm sure there's excesses on both sides. I'm sure both sides are to blame for this. I'm sure somehow we, we both sides are equally culpable or, or wrong. They're certainly both very loud. They use the same font size. And I don't, I, I'm too afraid to take a stand on anything. Mm-hmm. Those are the people who have been brainwashed, not by Rush Limbaugh, not by Sean Hannity. They've been brainwashed by Michael Gerson and David Brooks and David Gregory and Chuck Todd into believing that no matter what the issue is, you don't have to take a stand on it because both sides are going to be wrong about it. That's why the Russian investigation has become who paid for the dossier. Right. Because it right. doesn't fucking matter who paid for it. It's oppo research. Every campaign in human history has done this. It's, it, it's, but it's the only element of the story where you can say, well, you know, Democrats say one thing, Republicans say another, and let's have a fight over who paid for it. Not mm-hmm. what's in it. Not whether it's true or not. Not whether it's it's been substantially validated or at least there's – it certainly sound a lot of it sounds really true and really in the same realm of facts, the same constellation of facts as what Donald Trump has already confessed to practically publicly. But those stories are all scary because they all involve pointing a finger at the Republican Party and saying mm-hmm. they're wrong. They're bad people and they're fucking us up. And we don't want to have that story because it might offend the people at Miguel's eating pudding. So right. we're going to have a story instead about how both sides are probably wrong in this. And there's both sides who can who can take some responsibility. And why can't we all get along, Blue Gal? Why won't Obama lead, Blue Gal? Why won't, <laughs> why won't Hillary fess up to oppo research? Which brings us, <laughs> you want to do a week in the review or do you want to? Yeah, because we're, we're, we're getting down to the top of the hour here. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blaze through the stories that just happened this week. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, Obamacare will apparently limp along until next year. It will be sabotaged. It will have its oxygen cut off. It, it, the, the sign up period will be shortened. Um, and every time the Republican Party, Donald Trump and the Republican Party blow up another pylon on the bridge and it, and it looks like it's going to collapse, they'll point to the bridge and say, see, the bridge is structurally unsound. We need to tear the whole fucking thing. And if down. you want to say fuck yeah. you to Trump, go on the exchange and shop around for insurance yeah. starting November 1st. And, and bring a friend. And bring a friend. Um, and make sure everyone you know who needs coverage gets it. Your your Senate, the Senate Republicans, remember, it's always important not to say Congress. It's always important to say Republican Republicans. Congress. Republic, yeah. The Republican Senate repealed a rule that allows Americans to sue their banking credit card companies. That's how and much let's they not forget it. that happened hours after Jeff Flake yes. gave this you know, game-changing speech about how we so have to passionate. stand up to Trump. He's so passionate. And the next morning said, well, you know, it's not about impeachment or the 25th Amendment. I don't think those remedies are justified. Are not, I, I, I'm not going to get a job in the lobbying industry if I say shit like that. So right. instead, I'm going to vote for a bill that absolutely fucks over the constituents who elected the guy who I purport to hate. Because I'm a Republican. Again, this is this is – Donald Trump is an emergent property – of a pre-existing political disaster called the Republican Party. Right, he is right. simply the physical manifestation of their most extreme characteristics. But that's, again, a story that nobody's going to touch outside of the crazy liberal <laughs> podcast world because nobody wants to understand the implications of that, which is you have to really start indicting, not in a, in a, in a legal sense, but in a, in a moral, ethical sense, from pulpits at the public square. You need to talk about your neighbors as fucking us up. And nobody wants to do that. So that's why we're going to have stories about how both sides did it. But both sides aren't doing it. The head of Cambridge Analytica tried to hook up with WikiLeaks. He said, hey, girl, how about you help me find some of them emails Hillary Clinton's uh, got hiding on her server? It was their intention. Uh, WikiLeaks, uh, who is a Russian stooge, a Russian cutout. Let's not let's be very clear what Julian Assange's role in this universe is. Uh, apparently turned them down, but they certainly tried. They certainly dropped their handkerchief and asked them to come up to their room and look at their etchings. Um, a two-person Montana utility company that apparently has bankruptcy problems, <laughs> um, as, as all Trump businesses and Trump-affiliated businesses uh, do, uh, with links to the Trump administration, won a $300 million, apparently no-bid contract, to repair Puerto Rico's infrastructure. Wow. 
That sounds positively Cheney-esque, doesn't it, Blue Gal? Which, which is weird because Tesla's bid was zero. We'll do it for free. And they went there for free and started putting power grids together. A teeny tiny division of Halliburton. Uh, yeah. Because that's what the government is there for. The government is there for plutocrats. To make Donald to Trump's to... friends rich. Yep. Mm -hmm. And yep. Trump continues to butt scoot all over Twitter like a dog with worms. He won't stop. He won't stop. He's not going to stop. He's never going to stop. So get used to that. The FCC is going to vote to eliminate cross-ownership limits on TV and radio stations. Uh, and Which newspaper. means that your local news is going to be owned by Trumpites. Yes. And and yes. Your local news and your newspaper and your radio will all be owned by the same propaganda outfit. By Sinclair. Yep. By Sinclair. By Sinclair yeah. or Fox, one of the two. Um, more than three quarters of Republican voters, 77%, approve of Donald Trump's job approval. That's Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Because when, you, when I hear statistics about the, what voters think and what Americans think, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about what voters think. I don't give a shit about what Americans think. I give a, I, I care deeply about what these specific members of specific political parties believe, because that's mm -hmm. where the that's where it's nut cut in time. That's what that's what's important. Saying that half of Americans believe blah blah blah, you mean all Republicans and some nut jobs in the middle, right? Right. That's what you're right, really saying, right. but you don't want to say that because again, somebody at McEl's, that's a local place that a lot of old people gather for lunch it's it, it's a place where i've taken my daughter to eat she looked at me and said is this restaurant for old people yes. we'll clear out <laughs> around three o'clock when when it's a cafeteria when murder she wrote comes on yes exactly. right and it's perfectly lovely and nothing against them they have a fine menu i got sick there only once uh, <laughs> but that the the story that republicans are fucking crazy here's here is a statistical breakdown of exactly how is not a story those people want to read they want to hear about Americans and what Americans think, what voters think. Um, after lying about writing to virtually all military families, this was just this week. Remember, this is just this week. Yeah. About military families who had a relative killed during his time in office, Donald Trump rush shipped condolence letters to them last week. Same thing with that twenty-five thousand dollar check he was going. He promised the guy and then sort of forgot to pay. Like he forgot to pay. Virtually every contractor who's ever worked for him because he's used to promising shit and then fuck you. And if you come after him, here's my lawyer because that's how con men operate. Um, yep. Apparently, grieving families kind of got pissed off that mm -hmm. not only hadn't he reached out to them, but he said he did in order to slander Barack Obama. Yeah, because yep. that's what you do when you're a racist moron. Whenever anything weird happens and it looks like you have shit the bed, quick, blame the black guy. And, that, and, and there's so much going on behind that uh, story in terms of threats to the congresswoman. Uh -huh. Don Lemon got threatened this week. It's, it's the, the threats against African-Americans who come forward. Right. Uh, it's, it's black women. It's black men. And I, 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 it was tongue in cheek, but I meant it. Uh, when I said on Twitter this week, you know, Republicans say it's too soon to talk about Republican interference right. in the 2016 election. Right. First, the Republican Party since 1964 has wanted to erase black voters. Yes. Period. Very clear about and that. And erase them from the electorate, erase them from the conversation, mm -hmm. and uh, only use them to drum up the white supremacist and anger the white supremacist mm -hmm. voter. Yep. Uh, and it is a racist party. It is a racist party. And if it's not, then it, the, the parts that are not, you know, explicitly are perfectly comfortable with it and, and enjoy the fruits of the racist labor. That's the point. Uh -huh. is that the David Brooks, you know, might even have African-American interns working for him. Sure. The New York Times. Very That's great. Person, yeah. Wonderful. I'm all for, you know, onward and upward with racial race relations. Uh -huh. He is benefiting from a racist political party, a See, white supremacist political party. And it is time for everyone who is, this is your vocabulary lesson uh -huh. for the week. There's, there's two things I hope people take away from this. Number one, Republican party is a white supremacist party that has worked since 1964 to erase black voters from the conversation and the electorate. And the second thing is, Sean Hannity has paid $2.4 million a month mm -hmm. to keep that 38% Trump base frothing at the mouth Stup about whatever it is. Stupid and angry and pointed in the right direction. Right. And they go right along with it. They're, and he's paid $2.4 million a month mm -hmm. 
to do that. You know how much? So the fact that that Bill O'Reilly had $32 million to flush down the toilet to get rid of a problem and then got a new contract Mm -hmm. signed the next, you know, within a week. Uh, There is so much money in that banana shack. (laughs) There just is. Uh, Whether it's uh, Rupert Murdoch money or or Mercer money or Coke money, there's a bottomless pit of money for people who play that game. Uh And Sean Hannity's got his share because he's he is he looks like Superman to some women. Right. Uh, he doesn't have very many women on his show because no. he is the imaginary husband yes. to a whole lot of weak willed white women who feel that the black man is gonna keep them unsafe. Uh-huh. But behind and he behind appeals all. to their racism and their sense of white safety, which is white supremacism. Why, and behind it all, behind, this is terribly important. I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of, or I'm very nearly done with writing a David Brooks post today. Um, and the title is, working title is, Leon Trotsky Never Had a Super PAC. <laughs> and you know, he's making some dumbass comparison between the modern Republican Party and the communist revolution, which I will expound on at great length. The point being, the reason that Steve Bannon is not just some fucking right-wing blogger or on under living under a bridge yelling at people. The reason that Sean Hannity is a well-known and respected figure on the right who can advise Donald Trump on foreign policy, and again, not just some asshole screaming on a, on a you know forty watt radio station in in Tampa, is money. It's not ideology. It's not belief. It's not some complicated think tank formula. It is there is a shit ton of money behind these racist assholes pushing their agenda forward. If I had $2.4 million a week to, to, for, to spend on a podcast, do you know how much damage I could do to the Republican Party? <laughs> yeah. I could, yeah. They, I could flip Illinois. But yep. there is no money on the left for this shit. And there's a fucking mountain, a mountain range of money uh, on the right to push this shit. And that's yep. really the, the difference. Um, you know, we can we can argue among each other, among ourselves, among our family about what priorities we should have and how we should get back to power and what we'll do when we get there and what should be first. And that's all great. And we should register people and there should be a ton of, of people out there getting people registered and IDs in their hands. And that's all great, too. The truth of the matter is the Republican Party has all the money in the universe to push this shit around or there would, there would be no Donald Trump. There'd be no Republican Congress. And the, the, the spectrum of our political conversation would be Bernie Sanders on the one side and Hillary Clinton on the other. That's what a healthy country should sort of look like. The reason we have this diseased disaster of a government is because a handful of extraordinarily wealthy, well-connected plutocrats want it that way. Mm-hmm. And they are mm-hmm. creating people like Paul Ryan on on wingnut farms, they're raising them from scratch, they're buying them off, they're they're buying newspapers, they're buying radios, they're buying the means of communication, they're buying the synapses of our democracy's brain and polluting them with a bunch of, of, of plaque, a bunch of nonsense, a bunch of, so we can't talk to each other because they own, they literally own the means of production when it comes to political messaging. And that- And you need to get on with our list because I'm going to start crying if you don't. All right. <laughs> Next. And I'm not, I'm I, I don't want to bring anybody down. I just want you guys to focus on what can we do this week? Yes. Right? Yes. What can we do this week? One week at a time. What can we do this week? And uh I think if you, if you're talking to your friends and neighbors and so forth about politics, you can say, "You know, that Sean Hannity makes 2.4 million dollars a month yeah. doing this." Yeah. What is he? What does he produce again? And, How many jobs? And does he I will. Create? I will tell you that I have noticed on the other networks, Fox News is becoming the story, yes. and I'm really glad to see that. This <laughs> that the Fox News loop is becoming the story, mm-hmm. and that's really important. Uh, it it's long overdue. Okay. All right. The the, the vo- Donald Trump's uh, vote suppression commission, because that's what it is, mm-hmm. no longer even pretends to talk to its Democratic members. Uh, mm-hmm. Two of the four Democrats on the commission have written letters asking, like, when are we meeting again and what kind of stuff are we talking about and mm-hmm. when is this report going to be written? Because they're not even pretending to include anybody but Donald Trump's racist, handpicked voter suppression specialists. That is what this commission exists for, and that's what the end product will reflect. Uh, and finally uh, – And by the way, the um... – Government Accountability Office, which is an independent, it is not an executive right. office, mm-hmm. 
Their director is appointed for 15 years, Mm -hmm. so he's not, uh, you know, a Trump appointee or someone Trump can can not hold to. Uh, They are going to be investigating the Voter Fraud Commission. Voter Suppression. That voter, suppression. The voter suppression commission. Yes, right. Um, Vladimir Putin, no kidding, has told Americans that we need to respect Donald Trump. Inside the country, disrespect is shown to him. It is regrettable and negative, a component of the American political system. So it gets a twofer out of this. Number one, we disrespect Donald Trump, and that's bad. Number two, disrespecting authority and being full of shit is is a regrettable side effect of democracy, which is why we don't demo- want democracy in our country. That's the upshot. The upshot is to pollute democracies all over the world so that his people will not come to him with shotguns in hand demanding that they get the right of free and fair representation. Because mm-hmm. that, that way just leads to chaos. Look what's happening in America. Um, for those keeping score... The children's health insurance program expired a month ago. Yep. A month ago. All they needed to do was meet. It's the program that insures our two daughters. Yeah. Yep. And all they had to do was meet for 10 fucking minutes, pass it as an extension, and that's it. And they won't do it. The Republican Party just doesn't think children's health is important enough to spend 10 minutes extending a program that everyone agrees is beneficial to everyone. Uh, and I had a letter in the local paper. Yes, you did. <laughs> It was not right above an Ann Coulter column either (laughs) Uh, about the CHIP program. And I put it at our Facebook page. So uh, I will maybe I'll post a link to it at my blog as well. I think that's a good idea. We'll put it in the links uh, to for this episode. We don't want to forget to mention that Puerto Rico is still a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Still not doing nearly enough. Um, The 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 and it's just not in the news anymore. It's just gone because we are on to some. And and this is something that, that we on the left. Um, first of all, our, our primary responsibility is is remembering, is keeping things top of mind. Secondly, when you hear people say the media is ignoring it, no, we're not ignoring it. The people who own the, the newspapers and the people who own the television station are ignoring it. That's true. But real humans aren't. Real humans are working their ass off to try to save that that place. Um, it's just that the media doesn't want to talk about it anymore because it's too goddamn embarrassing. Speaking of which, CNN still has 14 tro- pro-Trump pundits on their payroll who made more than 500 appearances in the last three months so mm-hmm. cnn you know the liberal you can't trust the liberal media cnn fake news fake news fake news still has at thanks to management decisions still has 14 pro trump scumbags on the air lying to people every day um and this is where uh, jeff flake comes back into the picture because mm-hmm. jeff flake gave the, gave the game away and now we already knew this we've known this for 20 years but the reason Jeff Flake isn't running again, he can't win in a Republican primary. Why can't right. you win in a Republican primary, Jeff Flake? Uh, because the voters are insane. Because the voters mm-hmm. have, have drunk, are, are so fucking brainwashed and enraged and drunk and stupid and Fox News addled and hate radio blind that even I, a right wing, ultra right wing Republican, am not fucking crazy enough for those lunatics. And that's mm-hmm. the state of play in the Republican Party. So anybody anywhere who tells you anything about both sides doing it is lying to you because that's simply not true. Anyway. Drift Glass, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. But this week we have a family member. Uh, <laughs> we have my sister's rooster as <laughs> Internet Rooster of the Week. Seems appropriate. My sister, Marion has a chicken farm. She has goats and chickens. And uh, we have one rooster named King Olav the 17th, who is this week's internet rooster. And the reason we've chosen King Olav the 17th is that King Olav is a very well-behaved rooster. Mm-hmm. There are some roosters on Marion's farm that she admits to me. She has, when we visited last summer, she pointed to one of them and said, he belongs in a stock pot. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Because he halperins he does. the other chickens. He does. All right, ladies. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's an absolute harassing, awful bully of a rooster, and he needs to go. And he says, with all due respect. With all due respect, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, but uh, King Olaf the 17th uh, knows the law, respects mm-hmm. the, the lady chickens on the farm, mm-hmm. is uh, protective of them with the other roosters, mm-hmm. makes sure, you know, et cetera. And proves that you can be a rooster and respect women. You can. You can. Even a rooster. <laughs> Absolutely. Even a rooster even a can rooster be taught to knows. respect women. Yeah. A rooster knows. This rooster knows what what it's all about. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, and he does his job. So uh, King Olaf the Seventeenth is this week's internet rooster. <laughs> will be on our Facebook page and website. Yay! Uh, my dad actually sent me this picture and said, "You've got to. I know you have internet kitties, but you've got to put up King Olaf someday." <laughs> I said, "All right, Dad, you got it." <laughs> You can send your internet kitty or whatever to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. We're never going to have $2.4 million a month. Nope. But... Uh, if you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, uh, buy one for us. And those $5 contributions pay for our electric bill. So we do appreciate that. Don't forget our Amazon link at our website. We believe in buying local. We also believe in shopping Amazon with our link if your alternative is a big box store. Now it's time to announce the latest winner of our beautiful bracelet cuff from foxwise.biz. Drum roll. Check out our website to see how great they look. Uh, the one we're giving away says resist and has snowflakes on either side with our URL. Yeah. If you want to buy something from foxwise.biz, don't forget to use coupon code DGBG, that's Drift Glass Blue Gal, DGBG2017 for 20% off anything, including custom orders. They will do for Christmas a customized thing with names of people that you love on it. Oh my God. Fox. Foxwise.biz. Our winner this week is longtime listener David L. from Florida. I was tickled, I have to tell you, Drift Glass, when his name came out of the random number generator. Mm -hmm. uh, he's somebody that has written to us for a long time. We're uh, very glad. Uh, David L. from Florida, you are the winner this week. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there. It is. At proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Little gal, the Internet Kitties are betting the rent money that Mark Halperin will be back on the air within one or two Halperins. Except for the lady Internet Kitty, right. who has an entirely different bet. Yeah. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the flower and the switch play knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017, Drift Class, Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters.